Hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com and today we're going to talk about Puppet Warp and what it is in Photoshop and make it maybe the best Puppet Warp tutorial that there is out there. But before we get going, let's talk about the sponsor. April of 2016 is GraphicStock.com's Creative Rewards Month and GraphicStock.com is our sponsor. You got to check them out. Um, they've got a lot of great stuff. 300,000 plus graphics, photos, vectors and more on their website. You can sign up and get six months worth of access for just 39 bucks. Check out the link down in the description of uh, this video. Um, maybe you need a photo. You're, you're dreaming of what it's going to be like when you're old, but also you got lots of deadlines that you just keep missing right now in the present. See, you can get any of those photos right there on graphicstock.com. Let's talk about the Puppet Warp feature. So Puppet Warp in Photoshop allows us to do a lot of cool transformation effects. Um, one of the things that I would recommend is if you're going to apply Puppet Warp to something or somebody, cut them out. I just quickly cut out these two uh, kids and placed them here on this background. You can see I left some little stuff between the fingers and on the side of her arm. You can tell it's obviously cut out and things like that, but we don't care about that right now. We care about Puppet Warp. Now, the first thing I like to do before I start applying Puppet Warp to anything is um, convert that layer that I'm going to Puppet Warp to a smart object. Object. So I'll right click, convert to smart object. Why do I do that? Well, because if we go edit puppet warp, puppet warp is going to apply sort of as a smart filter. We can we can shut it off, we can turn it on, whatever. Here's how it works. We have a couple different modes. I'm gonna roll with normal for now. We also have density. I like to go with more points just because it gives me more areas where I can just kind of stick little tacks and pins and all that. We can choose to show the mesh or not. I kind of like seeing the mesh. I don't know if it's just like a visual thing or what, but I kind of dig seeing it. So I'm going to roll with the mesh, um, and then expansion, I'm just going to leave it two pixels. Here's how it works. If you place a point like right there on his forehead, and then you click and drag, it's going to sort of spin and pivot everything off of that point um, on his forehead. See how that's the one point that's staying in place, and you're like, yay, this is so fun, right? It's not fun because it really hurts to have a pin in your forehead, but you get the point. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of that pin by right-clicking on the pin and choosing delete pin. What we're going to do is we're going to move his hand. Um, so we're going to place a pin here on his elbow. Think of this as a joint. Uh, and we'll place one down here on his armpit. It's really, think of it, it's his shoulder, really. We're going to select the pin here on his elbow. And I'm going to hold down the Alter Option key. And we get this sort of rotate functionality. So let's try rotating. You can see it bends his arm in. But it has the side effect of bringing up their legs. So let's undo that. We're going to place some pins around his body and around her body as well. Because we don't want them to move. So let's tack that elbow, that shoulder his forehead, his chin, uh, let's go wrist, wrist, elbow, shoulder, chin, forehead, right? I'm just going to go through this really quickly. All right, so now that we have our pins placed, maybe I'll throw another one right there. Let's select this pin. It's very important you select the pin, hold down Alter Option. You get that little circle that appears. I don't know if you see that. Let me zoom in maybe a little bit. You see that little circle that appears when I hold down the Alter Option key? And that allows us to rotate and sort of move his arm in or out in a very like Monty Python-esque way. All right, so we can make him wave and go, hey, mom, what's up? You know, we're having fun. Well, not like that. That's that's like Harry Houdini got a hold of me. Um, but now check this out. So we move his hand down, it disappears behind his head. What if we want it to appear above his head? Well, we can choose to elevate the pin depth and that's going to move this up in front of the artwork, which we're sort of swinging his arm down in front of. That's a little bit of an unrealistic bend. So let's just bend it maybe kind of like that. And let's select her elbow here. And we're going to bend her up. But the problem is we have a pin on her wrist. So it's just sort of breaking her forearm. That's really bad. Let's select the pin on her wrist. Right click. Choose delete pin. And then hold down. Well, select the pin there on her elbow. Hold down the alter option key. And move her arm up a little bit. So she's like, yay, look at what we're doing. So cool. Um, and maybe what we'll do is we'll make her sort of pop her hips inward toward him a little bit. So instead of holding on the alter option key, we can just select a pin and we can drag that pin. All right. So we can drag both of these pins for her hips and just move them in a little bit. And by the way, you could use this to entirely shape shift somebody's body, maybe make them a little more skinny. Think of it as like a, a, another way to non destructively apply uh, like liquefy features, right? We can bring his arm in a little bit. We could bring the wrists up or down or whatever. Um, I can throw a pin on his uh, hand here and we could maybe make his hand go back out a little bit, something like that. Uh, we could bring his, uh, the side of him in a little bit, maybe expand his hip outward a little bit, uh, bring this knee in just a touch, but maybe we need to place a tack out here so we can swing this leg around so he's kind of, you know, kicking that knee out a little bit. Maybe we'll do the same thing with her because that kind of looks funny. Well, see that, that, that's bad. We need to place them on all of the feet. Let's try this again. 
Eh, it still looks kind of funky, but we'll just let her, eh, you know what, I'm going to undo that. So you can see by clicking and dragging points, by holding on the alter option key, selecting a point, you can rotate any point. Um, and you can go in and do all kinds of really, really kind of crazy things. Um, and by the way, if you hold down the alter option key and just hover over any point, you see the little scissors icon that appears? That just gets rid of that point. So that's a little hot key to get rid of a point. Um, so... This is Puppet Warp in Photoshop. I guess let's commit the change here. Um, go ahead and commit the change. Boom. And if I hit this little fly down menu, I can actually click the eyeball to shut off Puppet Warp. There's what it looked like before. There's what it looks like after. Boom. Before. After. Is it 100% natural? Absolutely not because it's Puppet Warp and it's a pretty extreme case of using Puppet Warp because his arm looks like a crushed Vienna sausage or something. It looks really bad and so does her bicep. But the point is, if you use Puppet Warp correctly and if you take your time with it, you can do pretty big structural changes not only to people but to all kinds of um, objects in Photoshop. So, for Puppet Warp in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutfield.com. I'll catch you in the next one.